All right, music fans, welcome. Harmless Dave back again, talking real music in real time for some real people out there just like you and just like me. So last night, <clears throat> I was a special guest of the band Journey uh, at the Emily Arena in Tampa, Florida. Uh, courtesy, I'll just let you know, it was Dean Castronovo, who's just a, a great guy. Um, floor seats right in the middle uh, toward the back of uh, section two. Tickets probably worth about five or $600 for both of them. Incredible. Uh, my wife and I, and we don't, we don't do this uh, trip up to Tampa too often because logistically for me, uh, it's brutal. Um, you got to leave at like three in the afternoon and I got home at about two in the morning. So <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of running on fumes. So I don't do this for too many bands. And I was very curious to see if Journey sounded better than they did when I went to see them at the same place back in 2018. And the verdict is absolutely 1000% this band has kicked it up a notch and it's crazy at this stage in their career that they are hitting on cylinders that i thought they didn't have anymore first let's uh let's talk about toto who opened up uh toto again a force of nature first time i've ever seen toto play live steve lukather and uh you know a different crew up there, Joe Williams, who's been with Luke off and on since the mid 1980s. Uh, both of those guys and the rest of the band was in excellent form, uh, sounding great. Uh, the only critique I have of Toto, I don't have an issue with their set, their set as far as the sound quality, the performances, the extended jams, all of that stuff was fantastic but as a toto fan i would have to say omitting two songs in their set which is backloaded heavily in other words they save um rosanna and then africa as the last song which the place went absolutely bonkers and it's become you know a pop culture thing when songs you know, are done by other artists. I know Weezer did Africa. I could care less about Weezer's version of Africa when you grow up listening to the real thing done by some of the greatest musicians on planet Earth. Um, but Toto's set could use a little tweaking. Uh, Hold the Line is in the set, which is fantastic. Uh, they lead off the set with a tune called Orphan from, I believe it's Toto 14. And it's a good song. And there are a lot of good songs that they play. Uh, they play Georgie Porgy, which I think is kind of an odd choice. But again, it was a song in the 70s that got a fair amount of uh, airplay. And there's even a disco remix or long version of the song. Um, two songs that I think really need to be in a Toto set. 99, which wasn't there. And for somebody who grew up listening to that song on adult contemporary radio, like every day of the week, 99 is a tremendous song. Plus, it has this long outro where you can do keyboard and guitar solos and you can jam it out and just do an epic version of it. And the other tune, <clears throat> the high energy tune that I think is missing from their set is uh, I'll Supply the Love, which was a single uh, after Hold the Line. I think at one point it was the B-side of Hold the Line, and then some DJs flipped it over and said, hey, and it's just an amazing song. And there are other tunes, I think, uh, in their catalog that probably should get some consideration. Uh, to have two really exquisite ballads in their set list is gutsy because a lot of people just want to go to a, a rock concert and, and rock out. But um, I'll be over you 
and I won't hold you back now. Both of those songs are just some of the finest ballads in the world and still get the occasional spin on your good adult rock station, adult classic contemporary, whatever you want to call it. Um, Toto played for about an hour and they squeezed a lot of energy into that set. My only, again, my only critique would be set list, I think could be a little stronger based on their catalog. Now it's amazing though, when you go from Toto to Journey and Journey steps on the stage and they instantly have catalog. This is an amazing band that has so much music and when you consider tunes like Only the Young, which is their lead off song, and people say, well, that's not really that big of a hit. It was back in the day, as uh, were pretty much every song that they uh, drug out. <laughs> drug is probably the wrong word. I don't know. Um, but some surprises, because I kind of checked out setlist.fm and you can get you know past performances i think i was looking at the uh, ppg paint center in pittsburgh not too much alliteration there and uh i was following along with that set list so i made a cd this is what i have done for years and it's it's kind of goofy but i'll make a cd with all of the songs that i think the band is going to perform and I listen to it on the way up. Sometimes I'll even listen to it on the way back. Uh, if I'm not too journeyed out at that point or totoed out, I, I made one for Toto and the CD I think was spot on, except they did do with a little help from my friends, which I think they do that because Luke has been in the all-star band for so long and he knows, you know, the power of the Beatles and that particular song that did liven up their set list. But again, if I'm a Toto fan, give me Toto. You know what I mean? Give me, give me some more Toto. And you can explore a number of other cuts on Toto 4 as well, which again, I would have been sitting there going, how come you guys aren't doing this song? I mean, this is your big album. And this cluster of time, you guys were really at your peak. And, you know, there are a couple of songs that came later, I think, that certainly would fit in. Anyway, getting back to Journey. So Journey uh, takes the stage and Arnel Pineda, all right, Dean Castronova was on this show, uh, what, a little over a week ago. And he got on here and he said, you know, it was a sound issue, the sound engineer and Arnel, and there was just this issue and he really couldn't hear himself and couldn't hear himself in the monitors and couldn't hear what he was singing. Almost like, you know, Huey Lewis has this medical issue where he can't find pitch, right? And Arnell doesn't have that issue, but he had an issue with the equipment where he couldn't hear himself properly to know what he was sounding like, all right? Now, a couple of people on different platforms and places that occasionally I frequent said, oh, Dean's just doing some damage control. He's, he's just trying to put a happy face on a situation that continues to go downhill. Oh, no, 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 no. That was not last night. Um, now, some people may say, well, you know, they can, they can fool you. Maybe he's singing to a vocal track. I was watching Arnell last night like a hawk. And I was watching the microphone. I was watching him sing into that microphone. Um, and he was, this was Arnell Pineda. And this was Arnell circa 2008, okay? 2007, 2008, when he joined the band. He was on fire last night. And I am not understating how great he sounded. In addition to how great he sounded, he was running all over the stage. He was brandishing the microphone stand. He was doing all of these amazing front man type things, and he was killing it. The Tarzan, like I used to call it, the Tarzan note on separate ways, absolutely perfect, even went above where he needed to go at the end, and it was just incredible to watch. 
Uh, he was on point the entire night. And uh, to me, other than seeing Steve Perry in Journey in 1981, which I did, okay, on the Escape Tour, um, this was the best Journey concert that you can see right now. Uh, without Steve Perry being in his prime, fronting the band, which those things can't happen anymore. Arnell has been with this band longer than Steve Perry, and uh, he is a road warrior. Uh, his voice throughout the night was consistent and strong, and uh, he sounded better than ever. His phrasing was far better than it had been in the past, meaning that he was singing the proper word when it needed to be sung at that moment, where in the past, sometimes he would lag a bit. Last night, he was just spot on perfect, right? And the band would go into some extended jams here and there and kind of change up songs a little bit, which was interesting because you got the body of the song and then uh, led, of course, by Neil Sean, who was just having a blast last night watching him he was just so happy and in his element and he could take that guitar and go off and do something and then it would come back to the ending of the song i think wheel in the sky was a great example of that but there were others that you know my brain fog can't process today but it was song after song after song now there were a couple of surprises and there was one tune, I'm just going to be honest, that didn't work, okay? But um, one of the great surprises for me uh, of the night was Dead or Alive from the Escape album. I cannot believe they did Dead or Alive. It was just glorious. It was fantastic. I, I was sitting there going, no way, I haven't heard. And again, you had quite a bit of escape material when you consider um, Don't Stop Believing." you know, spoiler alert, third song. And it's been, I've already talked about this, how they throw it right out there. Third song, because we've got catalog. I know you guys think we're just going to sandbag this. And they used to do that. They used to play it at the very end. And then when I saw them in 2018, they played it at the end and the confetti would come down, which last night um, they concluded with any way you want it right? And just as powerful, just as impactful with the confetti coming down. And it was um, actually, I get hit pretty hard with a lot of uh, big streams of the stuff coming down. I think my wife took a picture of me. I was kind of wearing it like I'm going to Hawaii or something, but uh, <laughs> it was, it, it was just the whole thing was just like almost picture perfect. Now, the one song that didn't work was the tune Suzanne from Raised on Radio. That was the weak moment of the night for me. Jason Derlotka, who's a great singer, sang it, but the audio and the presentation was somehow a little bit off and the crowd was not into Suzanne, which is a great song, like I say. Uh, it's a punchy kind of R&B kind of rhythm to it. And it, it just seemed to stick out a bit like a sore thumb. And the other songs, though, from Raised on Radio um, were fantastic. Toward the end, Be Good to Yourself, just magnificent. But again, Arnell hitting on all cylinders. Of course, my buddy Dean Castronovo, uh, he gets center stage for Mother Father, and he just, he, he's just amazing on that track. He's, it's just I think even people who aren't familiar with that song, all the casual fans, they're just like listening and watching as this drummer <laughs> hits these ridiculous notes. And yeah, that's really him. You know, he could, he doesn't want to be a lead singer. He doesn't want to be a front man in a rock band. Um, he doesn't mind getting a song or two here or there, but uh he just does such an amazing job on it. And he only gets better. I mean, when he first started doing this a long time ago with Mother Father, it was almost like a novelty thing. Yeah, we're going to give the drummer a song to sing. But now people are like, whoa, here comes Dean. Arnell departs. 
gets off the stage, takes a break. And, uh, and it's such a magnificent song. Again, another track from Escape. You've got Who's Crying Now. You had Dead or Alive, which was just so awesome to hear. Um, Mother, Father, and, and obviously Don't Stop Believing. And um, a great piano intro by Mr. Jonathan Kane, who, um, again, was, was very happy. Apparently, it was his wife's birthday last night. And uh, he did a little shout out to her. It was it was pretty cool. Uh, a lot of people were were moved by it. And then um, he dedicated faithfully to her. But the piano intro to Open Arms, which again another track from Escape, just really great stuff. Uh, Todd Jensen on bass, really good with the bottom end. Very energetic out there. Very kind of in tune with both Dean and Neil on stage. And there's, there's kind of like a, you know, these guys are locked in They're These are professional musicians doing what they do best. I mean, you can't try this stuff at home. Um, you know, if you're a tribute band, you should be paying attention to this tour because these guys, you know, they've kind of, put the idea of, well, we're a band on our way out. So all of those tribute bands, and I love a lot of them who do Journey. Um, after hearing Arnell last night, yeah, you know, I would go see Journey again. Logistically, you know, they'd have to come a little closer to my house. Because um, again, this just because of where I live in Florida, you know, I'm kind of close to Fort Myers which unfortunately you get kind of like B or C level stuff. You don't get the A team like Journey and Toto. You don't get the A team too often. Every so often something goes to Estero because there's a big arena down there. But oh, um, 15,000 people last night sold out. Not, I mean, there are a couple of times because they have a second balcony you know, and it, it's so high up first balcony, second balcony, and you're just looking up and there's not an empty seat to be found. You know, there are a couple of things that irritated me last night. There are a couple of people in front of me who were wearing um, oxygen inhibitors during the entire show and seemed to be kind of miserable watching it where everybody else was just enjoying themselves, having a great time. And I didn't see anybody else other than one usher who was wearing one of those. And um, it's it's just sad, the Stockholm syndrome here. You know, if you think that's going to help you, I, I, I don't understand it at this point. And I hate to even mention it here. And then we had, you know, here's another thing that drives me crazy. I don't mind people using their phones to record stuff right? And to be kind of involved and do the selfies and do the videos and stuff. But like, there was this guy next to me and it was all night long. He was looking down and I'm looking up, I'm looking at the stage. I'm looking at Arnell running around like a madman. I'm looking at Neil Sean shredding and they have a great visual presentation behind them, um, which focuses mostly on them as they're doing what they're doing. But then there are some visual aids that are very, very decent. Um, Send Her My Love is a breathtaking song live. And Arnell just, he just annihilated that song in a good way. There were so many moments where I was looking over at my wife saying, holy crap, he's as good as he's ever been. He was hitting every note. He was not pitchy. His phrasing was so much better than it has been. And um, whatever they did to correct it, um, Dean was not blowing smoke. I mean, this was, if you're a Journey fan and they're coming to a city near you and it's not two hours and 20 minutes away um, and you're not driving through rush hour traffic. And by the way, if you're, you know, a little more hardcore than yours truly when it comes to live concerts, um, go, go and see them go. And, you know, we, we did the whole thing. We, we got there early. We had a little nice little dinner ahead of time, but I'll tell you what, um, here's, here's some prices. 
Uh, cheapest parking was $30. We paid $40. All right. We were in a real good spot to get out of there and it still didn't help us. Um, you know how I always say $14 beer? The beers were $13.75 last night. <laughs> So again, my wife's like, you're going to have to say it's 1375 and correct all your videos. I'm like, all right, it's 1375. Um, you know, the restaurant was like 50 bucks and no, that's not with the tip and everything. So uh, it's not the same world as when I was in the parking lot of the Cape Cod Coliseum. And, you know, I got a complimentary ticket then. And I got one now. Um, does this even say it's just going to say comp? It's yeah, it's a zero dollars on it, right? But the ticket I got in 1981 said twelve dollars and fifty cents on it, and I was seeing Steve Perry, and I was on the floor, and it was spectacular. And I think Steve Smith were was throwing drumsticks, and Neil was throwing picks. Neil was throwing picks again last night. I mean. This is a band that is rejuvenated. They're off the hook. They sound amazing. And I can't speak more highly than this about them. And nobody's paying me to say anything. It's not because I got to go see the band. Uh, I told Dean I would do an honest critique of it. I did have an issue with Suzanne, which is minor. I think they need to get rid of that song in their set list and give Jason something that is a little meatier, a little, little more. I think Suzanne was like the third or fourth single from the album. Uh, and it's a great track, but it, it kind of bombed. Everything else, though, was like home run after home run after home run. And still, to hear Suzanne, in a way, was kind of cool because I'm like, wow, they're taking a risk here doing this song. And whereas everybody else in the building is thinking, oh, bathroom time you know, or uh, go buy a t-shirt right now. Nope. For me, I was just watching it going, Hey, good for them. And Jonathan Kane even introduced it and said, Hey, here's a guy from, I think he said big sky country and uh, referring to Jason Derlotka. And uh, he mentioned raised on radio. Interesting. Both uh, Jonathan Kane and Neil Sean last night mentioned Steve Perry. Um, Neil Sean had to correct himself right before lights. He said, this is the first song, uh, Steve and I ever wrote. And then he said, no, I mean, it's the second song, second song we ever wrote together. And, um, Jonathan Cain was kind of nostalgic. Hey, Steve Perry, um, you know, this was the last tour that we had with Steve Perry, the raised on radio tour. So, Steve Perry is always in their rear view mirror. He was too important not to mention. But I tell you, last night, that was Arnell Pineda's show last night. He was that good. And I know there are some people out there, right? And I don't, I don't know if they do it intentionally, but they always make you feel like they're hoping this guy fails, right? And for a couple of years, I thought, you know, they were going to get their wish, but all of those corrections made such a difference. And he is just, as a front man too, he was a lot more confident. And I know why he's a lot more confident because he can hear himself and he knows, yeah, I can do this. All of those high notes, the difficult notes at the end of separate ways where that little dialogue kind of takes place over Neil's guitar solo. And then obviously that Tarzan yell at the end. Uh, and then there are a few other notes throughout the night that you know are coming and you're thinking, oh no. But yet every single time he just nailed it. It was just a joy to watch. So again, if you're thinking about going to Journey, do it. Just do it. This band is on fire. Uh, you're going to hear every song you want to hear, plus a few that you didn't expect. And uh, I think these guys like to mix it up a little bit on the set list because I went to setlist.fm uh, to see some of the previous dates and they moved some things around. You know, they, they, they had a few songs on prior set lists that weren't there last night. So, you know, good for them. That means that if you go to a certain show, you might hear a song 
uh, that somebody else at a prior show isn't going to hear. And I like that. And Toto, I mean, again, Toto was fantastic. The only complaint I have is that I think they should examine their set list, include 99 for sure, and include I'll Supply the Love. Um, and then maybe even go through that catalog a little bit more and extract some things that have a more familiar bent to them. I would do even more of Toto 4. There were a lot of songs that were released after um, Africa and Rosanna that did get on the charts and especially on album rock stations and adult contemporary stations. For anybody, by the way, who just dismisses Toto as a as a yacht rock band, you know, oh, here comes some yacht rock. Yeah, you got to go hear them. You got to go see them. I mean, look, I like yacht rock. I'm not saying it's bad, but sometimes just throwing things in a category will make people say to themselves, well, you know, I want to hear something's really, really rocking out and beefy. And, and I mean, Steve Lukather, really? I mean, you know, I'm hoping one of these gigs, and it didn't happen last night, that Luke, and Neil go out there together and just, or, or Luke comes out on stage during a journey song and they just trade licks or something. Um, that didn't happen. Um, maybe that's too much of a showstopper. I don't know. Um, the show is already a very lengthy show. Um, it started at 732 and I think it ended at like 1112. So <laughs> I'm running on fumes, everybody, but man, oh man, uh, what a great concert and uh, highly recommended. So there you have it, folks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Patreon for just a dollar a month, maybe two bucks a month, and uh, I will see you soon. But I might be taking a nap for a while before I actually see you soon.